Hey everybody, I'm Cameron from Cammy's Garage. I thought I'd reintroduce myself to the whack of new subscribers that I've received over the last few days thanks to Bobby Duke sharing my caricature video. So huge thanks to Bobby for the show, and thank you to all the new subscribers and the old ones that have been around for a while. I've been doing caricatures of my favorite makers, and I feel like Bobby and I share the same philosophy about art. You just gotta get out there, do it, Try new things and have some fun. Someone commented on the video and asked if I could do, do a tutorial about how I animated Bobby. I thought that was a pretty good idea. I have 20 years experience in the animation industry as an animator, layout artist. I even worked on The Simpsons for a few years. I was never the best animator, but I seemed to be able to do, to do things pretty quickly and efficiently. Once I learned how to use the software, of course. I have to warn my regular viewers, this is not going to be uh, one of my normal videos. I like to keep my videos very short, under five minutes usually. This one will probably be a lot longer, but hopefully it's interesting. First thing that you will notice is that it is not widescreen. That's because my current monitor, which is a Cintiq 21 UX is 4x3 aspect ratio. I'm going to assume that most of you have seen the Bobby Duke caricature video. So I used Adobe Animate to draw this. I also used Adobe Animate to do the animation. As you can see, it's simply a black and white drawing. Once I decided to do the animation, the first thing I did was I went to Bobby's Stormbreaker video and I used Audacity, which is free audio software, to record the audio bits that I wanted from the video in order to try to make it sound like he's actually talking about my drawing. Once I had that recorded, I imported it into Adobe Premiere and then cut up the audio for the bits that I wanted and then exported it as an audio file that I could put into Adobe Animate. When you open Adobe Animate, it's going to ask you what kind of file you want to make. Pick Action Script 3, not HTML5 Canvas, because that'll come in important later when you're doing lip sync with sound. This is not necessarily going to be a tutorial about how to use Adobe Animate. This is just going to be me showing you how I did the Bobby Duke animation. So we have the timeline up here. This represents frames. This represents layers. If you're animating, one thing you need to have open though is the library window. So I'm just going to dock that over here. The first thing to consider is the resolution. I've been using 720p. If you right click on the stage, this is called the stage, you, go, you can go to document and you can change your stage size. I want it to be 1280 by 720 which is standard 20, 720p resolution. So I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. It's important to learn hotkeys if you want to use the software effectively. So the white box represents what's going to be seen on screen once it's rendered. I'm just going to zoom my window up a little bit so it fits in my frame. I'm going to copy and paste Bobby's caricature into my scene. I want them to be about that big in the screen, I think. So if I'm making a scene to animate, usually the first thing I do is put the entire thing inside a symbol. Now symbols are important for animation in Adobe Animate. They're basically self-contained pieces of animation that you can move around almost like paper cutouts, but you, but you can also do animation inside the symbol. For example, I'll just make all of Bobby here a symbol. So you can either right click on whatever it is you want to make into a symbol and say convert to symbol, or you can just use the hotkey, which is F8, which is what I normally do. We make it Bobby one, as you can see, Bobby symbol shows up in the library. So when I had the idea to do this, I wanted it to be overlaid on top of video that I have already shot of me doing actual, actual caricature. So it's important that the frame rate match with the other video so I can combine it later. I happen to know that the video that I shot is 27.97 frames per second, which shows up right there, but you can also change it over here in the properties panel if you click on the stage first. So the reason why you put the entire scene inside a symbol first is just in case you want to do any camera moves. You can basically just drag it around. You can animate, shrink, or move it however you like, and then animate it later. So we'll just call it scene. So you can just double click on the symbol that you've just created to go into the symbol. Now it doesn't look any different really, but you can see right here, this is the symbol that you're inside. This is the original stage. So you can have nested symbols, and we'll get to that more in a second. So I want to frame a reference here so I know where I should put Bobby on screen. So what I did was I went and got a screen grab from one of my the videos of me animating Bobby. So we make a new layer, put it on the bottom, call it BG for background, 
and we're going to make it a guide, which will keep it from rendering in the final scene once we export it as a video. And just paste it in there, line up the edges of the video with that black box. So that's close enough. It's just going to be a placeholder anyway. So we go inside the symbol and you can see it gets grayed out so it doesn't really get in the way. All right, now we need to work on Bobby. Dookie. So in order to animate him, we need to break him up into different parts. I mean, if I was doing it at full animation, I would break every part up into some way that would help me. But because I wanted to do something very simple, like Terry Gilliam slash Monty Python-esque animation, which is very simple, I'm just going to have his mouth open and close like a marionette, and probably only his eyes and eyebrows will move. But the head has to be on a separate layer and or in a separate symbol. The neck has to be in a separate symbol, the body, and then all of those those have to be in one symbol as well. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in his face with other parts with white. Fill in all those gaps. So before I start breaking him up, I'm going to make a new, I'm going to call this layer original. And this is going to be my original drawing so I have something to go by when I'm breaking it up into other parts. So I'm just going to leave that and not mess with it. Copied it first. I'm just going to hide it and make a new layer. And I'm basically going to build him. Call this body. It's just going to be his body. So I can delete all this other stuff. Okay, so that's his body. I'm going to make that a symbol. Call it body. His next layer is going to be his neck. There, so we have his neck. This next layer is going to be his head. So because this part of his mouth is going to be like a ventriloquist dummy, sort of mouth opening and closing, I want to have his teeth and in the inside of his mouth, which is basically just going to be black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically make it look like he's got teeth in there like that and then fill the rest of this in so it'll just look like the inside of his mouth it's only going to be black and white so don't have to worry about a color difference however you can't really tell that the edge of his mouth is right there so we can just draw indications of the end edges of his mouth I can turn on pressure sensitivity so uh, it'll be thicker and Thin depending on how much pressure I use. It's a good thing about having a Cintiq. So this part will be mostly covered by his jaw opening and closing. So that's going to be his head. Next layer is going to be his chin. It's important to keep the line on the bottom portion of his mouth. So when you open and close his jaw, his lip doesn't blend in with his teeth. So that's how it looks so far. And if you grab it, open it and close it, and that's what it looks like. So this animation is going to be pretty simplistic. And one thing I forgot to do when I made the head was make his holes for his eyes. So I want the eyeballs to be able to move around. What I can do is just make holes for where his eyes are. So now I can go back into the symbol for his head, paste in the drawing. It doesn't line up unfortunately, so I'll have to manually line it up. Okay, I should put it on a new layer though. Okay, so now we've made his head with his eyes. So we want to have his eyeballs in there. And we actually want those to be under the head. So I realized we need to have a bit of white behind the eyes. 
So now we need the eyebrows. All right, so we pretty much have this character built. He's all separated into different layers. However, if we move his head, his eyes don't follow, which of course is a problem in his brow. So we want the eyebrows and the eyes to be inside his head symbol. So what we can do is just select the ones we want, cut them, go inside the head symbol, paste them, line them up approximately where we want them. It's probably pretty close. Select everything on the same layer, then go to the Modify menu, go to Timeline, and Distribute to Layers. So now all those parts are on separate layers. Of course, those eyes are above his head layer. That's not what we want. So we can just grab those three, the whites of his eyes and his eyeballs, and drag them underneath the other layer. And we can just move them around where we want. Now we have some empty layers there we can just delete. So now when we move his head around, grab his head, his eyes and his eyebrows are all. So we have this character build made here. We're pretty much ready to animate. Unfortunately, they're all one frame long right now. So you have to decide how long is your scene going to be. So we're about 30 frames a second here. So if I make it, say, 90 frames, it's going to be about three seconds long. However, you want all your symbols to be the same length as your main stage. So you can extend the number of frames your animation is by simply highlighting the frame you want it to go to and then press F5. And that's the length of your scene. But we need to have the audio in there. Just for this demo I'm just gonna have a a short, just use a short piece of it. So earlier I grabbed the audio from Bobby's video and saved it to a file. So now I want to import it to the library double click your audio file, in this case it's an mp3, it shows up in your library. Click the first frame of where you want the audio to be on a separate layer. In the properties window, go down to sound and where it says name, pick your audio file from the list and it will show up in your layer. Then under sync, make sure it says stream instead of event. That way you can scrub the timeline and hear the audio. It helps you do lip sync. Speaking of lip sync, uh, one thing I overlooked was putting the mouth symbol inside the head symbol. I actually want this line to line up with the bottom of his mustache there. So, see these colored boxes right here? If you click on them, you can set it to outlines so you can easily see and line it up by eye. So normally if you had a mouse symbol, if you went into the symbol, you would have a whole bunch of frames with different mouth positions on it. It's known as a mouth chart. So different sounds that your mouth makes have different positions, like an ah sound has the mouth open, while an, an M or a P has the mouth completely closed because your lips are pursed. Those are just examples, but because this is going to be really simplistic and it's just this jaw opening and closing, I don't have that. It's a lot more work to make an actual mouth chart. So now it's just a matter of going through, describing the timeline, listening to the audio, and making a different mouth position for each frame. Not necessarily each frame. I did it at every other frame. Now normally in traditional animation is done on twos, which means there's a drawing every other frame. And in film that used to be 24 frames a second. But because this is video, it's 29.97. So it comes in and he goes, oh, hello. <laughs> That's what happens when you are lip syncing to audio. You end up memorizing the auto audio that you were trying to sync. It's kind of a weird side effect. So he comes in and his mouth is closed right here. And then on frame 33, his mouth starts to open because he's going, ah. So I'm going to open it a little bit. Oop. So now you have to make sure that you make keyframes for every mouth position. So I'm just using the up and down arrow key and holding shift at the same time and I can open it and close it. So that one's going to be halfway open. So he's quite loud here and his mouth will be open pretty far. So it goes, oh, so during the O oh, his mouth will close a little bit. And then he says, hello.
So you can already see he says, oh. Anyway, I won't go into animating all of that. That's just to give you an example of how to do lip sync. Normally, you could just make a keyframe, click on the symbol. So usually, you would have a mouth chart inside, and you would have a chart that would tell you what frame has what mouth position on it, and you can change it right here in the properties bar. But there's only one frame in there, so that's why it's on the first frame. So that's how you do lip sync. If you go outside the symbol, so this is going to be pretty simple animation. So I'm just going to do it pose to pose, which means I'm going to simply make two poses and then use the motion tween of the software to do the in-betweens for me. I'm just going to make something really simple here and I'm going to start the animation on frame 30. And then I'm going to go to frame 45 or something like that. This is just going to be an example. And let's just say it's going to lean forward a little bit. Now he'll um, move his head and neck forward, for example. So I can move the center of where I rotate around if I have more than one symbol selected at the same time because it'll just revert back to the center if I select different ones. However, if you only have one symbol selected and you move this, this is where the rest of your animation will register to. So if you move this on a key keyframe, it'll stay there. So you, you'll end up having weird things happen. So when you build your character, you want to establish where that center is at first and then just don't touch it again. But you can always double click on it to return it to the center, its original center. For example, if I set this character up initially, I could have put his pivot point you know, at the base of his skull somewhere. You know, like that, rather than having it in the center. Because that's more a weird motion. The other way looks a little more natural. So I can use the period and comma to step back and forth between frames just to see what it looks like. I'm going to grab his head and neck again. So he's leaning forward a little bit with his neck, but he could also tilt his head. So it's kind of got that sort of thing going on. So now you can go up and select any frame between those two keyframes and say insert. Oh, I've been using classic tween because I'm an old school flash user, so I haven't bothered to try to figure out how to use the new motion tween. So if I use classic tween, you can just see it. And of course it pops there for some reason. Probably because I was messing with the center point. So we'll undo all of that and then just start messing around here. Back up to classic tween again. So it does, automatically does the movement, but that looks really stiff. Now how you can change that is, what you can do is you make keyframes halfway through, select the first well, really, you can select anywhere between those two keyframes and go down to the properties bar and you look at ease and you can drag it back and forth using in, which is a negative number. So the movement will start out slow and then speed up close to the end. And you can do an ease out as well. So they'll move fast in the middle. Oh, hello, everyone. So that looks a little more natural. Still mechanical, but as I said, I wanted this to be super simple, so that's all I did. I just repeated that process. Eyes move pretty quickly, so I never used more than one in between for eye movements. I like those eyeballs. If I wanted them to look right, I can just move those eyeballs over there at that keyframe. But I could make one in between for those as well. Oh, hello, everyone! Do the same for his eyebrows. Say I wanted his eyebrows to move. He's looking to the stage right, quizzically, so his eyebrow goes up. You can... So that's the start position and the stop position. Go to... Make a tween, and his eyes, eyebrows move. You can add ease and out to it. 
And that's about it. Of course, there are a lot more nuances to creating good animation that I, I mean, you could go to school for years or work at a studio for months before you get a good handle on how to do nice animation. So I'm just going to open the file that I created for Bobby and just show you all the in-betweens that I used and the motions. Oh, hello, everyone. It's YouTube's favorite show. And that's what it looks like at the end. Once your animation is all done, you can go to File, Export, Export Video. And make sure Ignore Stage Color Generate Alpha Channel is checked, because that will make your background see-through and you'll only be able to see Bobby. You can pick where you want it to save the file and click Export. Once that was done, I imported it into Adobe Premiere. Now this looks black because this, this is an alpha channel and just the default background is black. Once you put it into your video, you'll be able to see through it. I just created a gray background here at first, and then my video fades in here, and you can see the video behind Bobby's animation. Once I had all the video edited, I exported it to a movie, uploaded it to YouTube. Little did I know at the time that I would have 15,000 rabid dookies watching it. Well, hopefully that helps someone that is interested in doing animation. If you're not interested in doing animation, I hope you've at least found it interesting. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around, and we'll be back to normal build videos very soon. Take care. See you in Cammy's garage.